Um, I won't talk about uh, pegmatites or uh, uh, spodumene today. I'll talk about a different area of the lithium industry uh, with brines and, um, and the evolving uh, sedimentary space. But I've got eight minutes to talk about a project that I've worked on for eight years, so I've got to be quick. So um, Arizona lithium, we've been around uh, for quite a while now. We know that the, the downturn in 2019, there's a little bit of a downturn now for lithium. But um, being in Arizona, you see a lot of electric vehicles on the, on the road. You see the massive demand that's coming. And I think those numbers, I don't disagree with those numbers we discussed previously, but I think that the mines are not gonna come on stream as predicted. That's just my opinion, uh, permitting, etc. cetera. And uh, you know, being in Arizona, you see the cars, you see the renewable energy being created. It's gotta be stored somewhere. So the demand for lithium um, I still think is being under, understated. But let's quickly move through uh, the slide, the standard uh, disclaimer, of course. All right, what have we got with uh, Arizona Lithium? We've got two large uh, development projects with large resources. So we've gone past that exploration stage and we're into the development stage. The reason why they're development is because the Prairie project up in Canada that we recently acquired comes with 4.1 million tonnes of LCE. That's in a brine and it's in a oil and gas producing region out in the prairies. I wouldn't suggest you go there. I was there last month when I left the airport, it was minus 21. They had de-iced the plane. So uh, not a great spot, but a good spot to have a lithium project. So don't go there on holidays. And the Big Sandy project is the one that I've been working on for eight years. I'm the original vendor of that project and that is in Arizona. It's uh, just north of Phoenix and uh, we are lucky to be having that, have that project in Arizona. It's a great place to operate, They're very um, mining friendly. It's the fifth largest copper producer in the world and they're very business savvy. I was over uh, at the invitation of the governor for a four day CEO forum, which culminated in the Super Bowl recently. And we sat in the governor's box for the um, uh, for the Super Bowl, but over those four days, they told us how good Arizona was and they didn't hold up. So they're very pro-business and uh, we're, we're very happy that uh, we're going to develop the Big Sandy project in Arizona and be producing from that area as well. So very mining friendly, both areas are. Uh, Saskatchewan is a historic oil and gas producing area. It has a very high water cut, so it's not dissimilar from lithium brine production. Um, these definitely are two world-class projects. There's no doubt about that. If you think about that resource, that combined resource of 4.4 million tonnes, the current market for lithium is about 1 million tonnes, as in the demand, the world demand for it. So that's a huge resource, and both can be increased significantly, particularly the Big Sandy project, because we've only drilled 4% of the land holding. We have built uh, the Lithium Research Centre in Tempe, just near the airport in Phoenix. And um, what we've done there is we've basically tried to create a, uh, a research centre which helps us with our feasibility study, builds our pilot plan, and it's all in-house. We did find that the lithium industry is only evolving and it was very difficult to get good contractors. So we've done it ourselves. We spent about $5 million on that and it's a world-class facility. We're finding that all the major players in the lithium industry want to look at the Lithium Research Centre, and that's a real positive for our profile in the industry. I have built a team over the last 18 months of uh, lithium experts. They're very hard to find because it's an evolving industry and it's a very small industry. But uh, our uh, CTO built the uh, pilot plant for the Lithium uh, Americas Thacker Pass project and he comes in very handy and he's a very important part of our management team. Just to uh, show where we are in regards to North America and uh, the Prairie Project sits up there out in the prairies in Saskatchewan. Um, uh, as I said, it's an oil and gas producing area. All the landowners are very familiar with the production of uh, oil and gas. So we don't expect any permitting issues there and it can be permitted very quickly. And then down into the Big Sandy project, 
uh, just near uh, Phoenix. And we also have another project, which is a brine project in Lordsburg. Now, I could show off if I wanted to and put the type of uh, facilities that are there in North America, such as gigafactories, etc. But I don't need to because this product will sell itself. Uh, selling the product is not uh, the uh, difficult thing. It's uh, finding it and processing it. So I wanted to show you this slide because this is the battery cell producers, uh, plants that they're planning to build in North America. And um, obviously these are getting a lot of funding from the current Biden administration through the Department of Energy, the Department of Defence, and the Inflation Reduction Act. So I think this administration has finally woken up that they're behind the eight ball when it comes to lithium production. And if you think about it, the only lithium production at this present time is in Nevada, and it produces a small amount of uh, lithium. So this huge continent that is so dependent on lithium has one producer. It's amazing. Okay, the nor the eastern part of uh, Canada will start to produce from spodumene, but the US really need all these projects to go into production to go anywhere near satisfying the demand. And when talking to government officials over there, they're very conscious and very aware, uh, aware now of the Chinese stranglehold they have over the lithium supply industry because Basically, any material that's mined has to go to China or Asia to be refined before it is a final product. So, um, very topical issue. And uh, in fact, in the US tonight, uh, 10 million people watch 60 Minutes in regards to direct lithium extraction. So, it has hit the mainstream media. Um, I'm very involved in the lithium space. I go to battery conferences, etc. But it has hit mainstream media. And that's really positive for us being to de development projects in North America. The Prairie Project, as I mentioned, is in Saskatchewan. It's a high quality inferred lithium brine resource. And uh, the reason why it is uh, an infer inferred resource because of so many oil and gas wells have been drilled in that, in that area. Now, Prairie have drilled three wells of their own over a 27 kilometer uh, space. and. Um, I think that resource can be expanded significantly. Uh, direct lithium extraction. This is something that will change the industry. The industry is, is very young, but direct lithium extraction basically is a process, and I don't know if you follow Lake uh, with Lilac Solutions. They are kicking some real goals there. There's a lot of other producers of direct lithium extraction that are starting to kick goals and take it from lab to commercial activity. And this is an area of the market that will produce large quantities of, of lithium and very good quality lithium. A lot of the direct lithium extraction techniques are very selective. So therefore, you are pumping all those material that are very difficult to separate from, say, a spodumene project or other projects. You're putting that back straight back down into the ground and you have a very good product. It still needs to be processed, but it's not as a secondary pro, uh, product as something like a spodumene production. But um, I personally believe direct lithium extraction will get a lot of publicity in the future, and so watch that space. Uh, the acquisition that we did at the end of last year to acquire Prairie uh, increased our resource significantly, and the reason for that is that we haven't drilled out our Big Sandy project. We, we're very happy with the acquisition and um, we are very focused on the DLE technology that Prairie have been developing in-house. Uh, the kick some goals with that. It needs a some further work that will be done at our Lithium Research Centre. But in tandem, we are evaluating third-party direct lithium extraction techniques. So if you want to take a step back, I assume a lot of people know about lithium here. But the... The projects that produce from brines in South America, they flood big uh, lakes basically, a bit like a salt operation, and they evaporate the material off and it goes from one lake to another and they take up a lot of area. So in an ESG we will, the world we live in, that's not acceptable, especially in North America. So some highly uh, knowledgeable people have been trying to develop this direct lithium extraction. It's basically filtration. 
So you bring the brine up from a depth, maybe 2,000 metres in the case of the Prairie Project. You put it through the filter and then you re-inject that uh, material back down in effectively a saltwater disposal well. So no real difference to oil and gas production that has a high water cut and um, very environmentally friendly. So a very small infrastructure at surface which can be taken away. And I think that's really important in the ESG world that we live in. This project um, is especially attractive to our board because it has large flow rates. In this basin in Saskatchewan, uh, the Williston Basin, it's, um, the grade of material is a bit smaller than some of the other lithium brine projects, but it has huge volume. So therefore it can produce large quantities of lithium. I've been given the bell, so I'm going to move quickly. Uh, I did discuss the 27 kilometres there at the, uh, the Prairie Project, and the grade was very consistent. So we're very happy with that resource, and we're upgrading that resource at the moment and uh, working on a um, preliminary economic uh, assessment. There's a little bit about how direct lithium extraction works, but I would suggest you guys have a look at direct lithium extraction. I think you can make a lot of money out of companies across the board in regards to that area. The Big Sandy project, I talked about that. That's the one I've been working on for eight years. We have a huge exploration target and uh, we have a resource of 320,000 tonnes and that can be expanded massively because it's only over 4% of the land holding. It's a sedimentary project and we are advancing that with a DFS. So two advanced projects. This one just demonstrates the type of simple ore body that we're talking about. And that's why Big Sandy works because it's basically a quarrying operation. The strip ratio is basically one to one. Uh, very easy mining process. And this is our additional drilling that we're going to be doing uh, next quarter. And we're just expanding the resource. The current resource is a 12 year mine life. We'll be taking that to 50 when we drill out areas B and C. Um, very simple drilling process, very simple geology. All right, the Lithium Research Centre, I'll jump over that, but that is a world-class facility and uh, we're very proud of that. All right, the news flow. Uh, we'll complete the construction of the Lithium Research Centre in this quarter. We'll get drilling approvals and uh, the direct lithium extraction technology will be further developed at the Lithium Research Centre. Um, we're working on upgrading the Prairie project to increase that already quite massive resource and uh, we'll, we'll complete the preliminary economic assessment. I think the market will be surprised how profitable these are, operations are, the brine ones. They are definitely in the first quartile of uh, cost producers for the lithium space. Uh, DFS on the Big Sandy project and I'm also working on the NASDAQ listing. Um, two North American projects very patriotic Americans, they all want to know about these projects. Uh, to increase the visibility of the company, we'll list on NASDAQ in the, uh, the last quarter of this year. Then we will commence the construction of a DLE technology field pilot plant at the Prairie Project. So that will be proof of concept, we'll start to produce material and we will provide that to off takers. It will be of high quality and uh, that will be a very important milestone for the company. All right, questions. I ran over. Sorry. Just on the direct lithium extraction technology, yeah. it could be a misunderstanding the description, but it sounds very similar to desalinization, uh, which has a very high energy requirement. Can you just briefly talk on the energy costs of the, uh, of, yep. of the method? Yeah, the, the, the energy costs are actually quite low because you have to pump the brine material uh, out of the ground anyway to put it into evaporative ponds. You, it's, you actually, there's a lot less CO2 emissions, etc., because you're putting it through the filtration system and then re-injecting with a saltwater disposal well. So therefore, there's a lot less energy and a, a much smaller footprint. The DLE technology that's being developed is not, it's not just one uh, DLE tech for all brine projects because they have to, they have different materials for the different quality of the brines, depending on what impurities you have in there. So if we crack the code for our prairie project, it doesn't mean that can be applied to all brine projects.